When Prime Minister and professional jellyfish impersonator David Cameron desecrated the remains of Lee Rigby by promoting the ideology that called for his death, I thought to myself, well, at least Britain's leadership can't possibly get any lower. They've hit bottom, so there's nowhere to go but up. Boy, did you guys prove me wrong. Apparently, beneath the political abyss is yet another abyss of even deeper cowardice and betrayal. The UK's gelatinous politicians have done what the 7-7 bombers couldn't have dreamed of doing. They've announced to the world that certain beliefs are officially above criticism, and that people like Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller, who promote open discussion of these beliefs, aren't welcome in Great Britain, just as they aren't welcome in Mecca. After shaking off what little moral fiber her office still had, Home Secretary Theresa May concluded that the presence of Spencer and Geller would be, quote, not conducive to the public good. So, a group of U.S. citizens traveling thousands of miles to pay their respects to a fallen British soldier is not conducive to the public good. But making adherence to Sharia blasphemy laws a requirement for entering the U.K. is conducive to the public good. And if by the public good you mean the annihilation of Western civilization, I agree completely. How do you think this public service message by the Home Office, or as some call it, the Office of Endless Surrender, will be received? Well, if you're a blossoming young jihadist wondering how you can convince people to stop criticizing your prophet, you now have your answer. Decapitate a soldier! and the government will reward you by silencing anyone who speaks ill of your prophet. No need to actually defend your beliefs in the marketplace of ideas like the rest of us have to do. Just start killing whenever someone offends you. The more violent you become, the more the government will punish human rights activists for provoking your deadly tantrums. The Home Office could have sent a very different message to the world, a message about the importance of public dialogue. Theresa May could have sent a letter to Spencer and Geller saying, We're so glad you're coming to the United Kingdom. Many people here disagree with your views and the claims on your blogs, so we'd like to get everyone together in a large hall where we'll finally be able to sit down and discuss our differences of opinion and broadcast the discussion throughout the country. When the discussion ends, we probably won't agree on everything, but we will share the same stage, and we will look each other in the eyes, and we will come to understand one another, and the entire world will know exactly what our nation stands for. As wonderful as a letter like that would be, it would require a writer who falls into the vertebrate subphylum, and since there's a tragic shortage of spines among British leaders, any defense of the values that caused Western civilization to flourish will have to wait for a major breakthrough in backbone installation surgery. In the meantime, the government's position is that the mere presence of Spencer and Geller would lead to violence. But let's face it, Theresa May isn't worried about Spencer or Geller or any of their followers becoming violent. They condemn violence. That's why they're against terrorism. Theresa May is worried about a violent reaction to Spencer and Geller honoring a victim of jihad. Which means, of course, that the violent people your leaders fear, O oh people of Britain, are already among you. You invited them in, and in the name of tolerance and multiculturalism, you refused to challenge their intolerance and cultural supremacism. And now you have to ban peaceful human rights activists from entering your country because the peaceful human rights activists might upset all the violent jihadists who are waiting for an opportunity to start a bloody riot. It's the heckler's veto on an international scale. Here in America, we complain about political correctness, but by actively suppressing free speech, British leaders have gone way beyond standard PC pandering. A government shutdown of unwanted ideas is not political correctness, it's political castration. The Home Office wants a population of quiet, mindless eunuchs. But that would be the end of Great Britain as we know it, as well as the triumph of Sharia over one of the main pillars of Western civilization.
So if Theresa May wants to ban people whose actions aren't conducive to the public good, she should go ahead and ban herself, along with David Cameron, Nick Clegg, and Keith Vaz. Assuming she's not too busy making her country the laughingstock of the free world.